Welcome to Electronline. In geometry, one of the most challenging parts is understanding all the names and all the symbols. So what we're going to do here is have a small set of videos that will systematically go through all the naming conventions, the typical names that we use in geometry. And we'll start with angles. And it turns out there's so many different names that I'm going to need at least two videos to describe all the various ways in which we can symbolize and explain and name different types of angles. So, first of all, what is an angle? Well, it turns out an angle is the rotational distance between one side and the other side of the angle. These two lines here are considered the sides of an angle, and it's the angular distance, the rotational distance from one side to the other side that define the angle. It's typically measured in degrees or radians, and if we go around a complete circle that is equal to 360 degrees, or if we go around a complete circle, it's also expressed in terms of radians, 2 pi radians. 2 pi radians equals 360 degrees. Now we have different symbols to notate angles. We have two lines like this. You can see that it's typically a symbolic representation of an angle, the two sides here. And this will see that this is called the vertex. If we drop down over here, you can see that the parts of an angle are the two sides and then the tip of the angle that's called the vertex. So here we can symbolize it like this. Sometimes we symbolize it with a little arch in between the two sides. Sometimes we use one arch, two arches, or three arches, depending upon how we want to compare angles to one another. And sometimes we simply draw a curved line through the two sides like that. Notice we also want to be able to label angles. Sometimes we use numbers, so we put the number along with the symbol. Sometimes we use the letters of the alphabet. And sometimes we indicate the angle by showing over here, we start from the tip or the far end of the first side to the vertex, which we call the next letter, then to the far end of the second side. So the angle ABC is sometimes expressed like this. Or we simply put a letter in there called angle A or a number in there called angle 1. Notice that angles can also be formed by taking two lines and having them intersect like this. So here we have an example, and notice this creates four angles, angle number one, number two, number three, number four. So we're using this notation here to notate those four angles. Now notice angle one and angle three are opposite one another. These are therefore called vertical angles. Also two and four are opposite to one another, so two and four are also called vertical angles, or sometimes we use the word opposite angles. So when you hear the word vertical, just think about opposite. Then also notice that we have angles that are side by side. They share a common side. So angles 1 and 2 are called adjacent angles. They are adjacent to one another, which means side by side. So are angles 2 and 3, 3 and 4, and 4 and 1. So these four pairs of angles are called adjacent angles. We also have special names for angles depending upon how large the angle is. If the angular size is less than 90 degrees, we call them acute angles. If the angle is exactly 90 degrees, we call it a right angle, and we use this little symbol here to notate that it's a right angle, that the angle is 90 degrees. If the angle is greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees, we call it an obtuse angle. And if the angle is exactly equal to 180 degrees, and that, all, that one always bothered me a little bit. How can you have an angle of 180 degrees? Because it gives you a straight line, but in geometry, we do consider that an angle as well, and we call it a straight angle when the angle is exactly equal to 180 degrees. And then if the angle is greater than 180 degrees, but less than a full circle, 360 degrees, we call that a reflex angle. Some other things that we need to know about angles is that when we have two angles side by side, like angle A and angle B, so they share a common side, if the two angles together add up to 90 degrees, we call them complementary angles. So they both add up to 90 degrees. Let's say angle A is 60 degrees, angle B is 30 degrees, 60 plus 30 is 90, therefore they're called complementary angles. And if the two angles add up to 180 degrees, they're called supplementary angles. I always had trouble figuring out which was which, and I would keep forgetting what complementary meant and what supplementary meant. 
And the way I finally figured it out was that this word starts with the letter C, and this word starts with the letter S, and C comes before S in the alphabet. In 90 degrees, is smaller than 180 degrees, so from now on I just have to think C comes before S, therefore that is associated with the 90 degree sum, and S comes after, and therefore it's associated with the larger angle, 180 degrees. So that's how I remember the difference between complementary and supplementary. So now we have some good idea of how to name and label angles. We have some more names we need to associate with angles. So we have another video, part two, to show you the rest of the names regarding angles.